shortcut. There's a path up this way. We can take it, we can get to the lot quicker. John! No, wait. Gay is dead. Why, thank you. I do try. You look I a bit confused. I always knew there was something off about you. You look a bit confused. Yeah, I guess I, I should am. probably explain. But should I explain? I guess you don't really know the full story as well. Oh, I know enough. I did tell you a bit. I don't know how much Chris told you, so. Chris? This is where the explanation starts. Indeed. So, as you know, that Dr. Edward Powell, who is now deceased, was my father. Strong emphasis on was, because he wasn't that way for long. Long time ago. Notice how I rem remember how I talked to you about how I said that my parents got a divorce when I was a kid? Yes. Mother passed out drunk, never knew her. 
Father was forced to keep me against his wishes. He didn't want you. No. I know that. So, for about a month and a half, maybe even two, I don't quite remember, he dropped me off at Ryan's place. And I basically lived there for a couple while. What he had always told me is that he was out doing more research on Wendigos. But when he came back, I was wrong. He wasn't, he wasn't just researching them. He was hunting one. And he did so successfully. He mentioned that. He mentioned he's killed a few himself. He likes saying that. He likes saying that he's done more, but he's so only he killed a whole family. Maybe even the maybe he killed the younger ones. He never brought them home. He killed them home. He killed one. And this is one that was not to be messed with. When he got home, he came and picked me up from Ryan's place. Took me home. Stayed for a bit. And he decided, you know, it would be probably a good idea to bond with my son a bit more. So he brought me to his lab, kind of to show me what he's what he works on. But, of course, being the six-year-old boy I was, I accidentally broke some of his lab equipment back home. He was a bit annoyed, but, as I said, he wanted to try and build a bit better of a relationship. You know, him being my father and all. So he didn't do anything to you? He... I'm not finished. When we got to his lab, he told me to go grab something and then using the same revolver I have, plugged one in the back of my skull. Left me on the floor, bleeding, dying. He was disgusted. We remembered the look on his face, it was not pretty. He plugged a six-year-old boy in the back of the head. He plugged his six-year-old son in the back of the head. He brought me over to his lab table and using whatever remains of that Wendigo he had, he tried to fuse that with his son. The experiments didn't go right. Didn't go how he wanted. When he was disgusted with the fact that it looked more like his son than a Wendigo, or anything else for that matter, he burned his lab down and, down and ran away, never to return to that place again. And before you're thinking, wouldn't the cops have caught him by now? But here's the thing. He was out in the middle of the woods, and he already paid off the cops a while ago. He could have gotten away with God, uh, God knows what when he did that. Who knows if it was even his only if I was his only victim? Then you're probably wondering, when the are immune to fire, he would have been dead anyways. You're wrong. Turns out, the splicing between my DNA and this Wendigo's changed how we functioned. I ended up just getting up off the ground, whole place burning around me. Checked the back of my head and there was a bit of a scar there, nothing else. And I just walked away. And that's when he started speaking to me. Dr. Powell? No. The Wendigo. That? Not that one either. That was a Wendigo. That was a right? Wendigo. But not the one that w that I am fused with. He started speaking to me, told me about what he knew about Powell and what he knew about this world. Asked me what I knew about his assistance and whatnot. Me being a six-year-old kid, I was naive, didn't know much. So I simply asked him who he was, and the response he gave me was kind of interesting. He said he went by many names, some of which he's forgotten, some of which he's had, but his most prominent one, the one that gave him the most meaning, Rain. Because everywhere he went, whether it would be populated, barren, deserted, didn't matter, water would fall and tears would shed. He's existed on this planet if you exclude the time he's had with me for over 2,000 years. He's far superior to the ones that we've known. 
In fact, he finds them quite hilarious. As in, if he really wanted to try, we would never have stood a chance. You don't need to be afraid. Rain is not hostile. It's more curious. It's a Wendigo! Ryan! Calm down. It is. Wendigos feed on their survival instincts. The, one that, the ones that we know have a bit more and are a bit playful. Now that Rain has no interest in, you know, surviving, seeing as he doesn't have that need anymore through me, he's curious about the world. He wants to learn about it. Heck, because he's known Ryan for so long, he actually likes Ryan. He finds him a noble warrior. He finds him smart. He just enjoys him. He's curious about you, though. Curious as to why the Wendigos chose to use you instead. I've known a brain for a while. I didn't know he was a Wendigo. But I've known him, lived with him, interacted with him, I guess. I would assume I have for years of my life. You can whip that dagger on me. Wouldn't do you any good. Are you threatening me? No. Wendigo? I'm telling you not to threaten me. There's no Wendigo. John. Not the Wendigo. If the Wendigo wanted to speak, he would. And right now, he is just listening. So calm down. I have no interest what? in hurting you. You or your friend Rain. Which no. one is it? Neither. Wow. Neither have interest in you hurting you. You are us. such a moron. Either way, story didn't end there. Once I left the lab, after we were talking for a while, learning more about each other, about our past, about everything, he gave me a suggestion. Find, find Christopher. Dr. Christopher Schwartz. We talked about him in the call, our car. He was one of the most n notable of Powell's associates, co-workers. In fact, dare I say it, he's smarter than Powell. But he's worked with Powell for a long time. So, from the humble state of Montana, where we are, I ran all the way to New York City. Why? Because that's where Schwartz lived. That's where Christopher lived. It took me three days. Quite impressive. But, remember, I was on foot, and I was six years old. So... When I got to there, I talked to Chris. He was interested. I told him about what, ha what had happened, what was going on. Him knowing Powell's rather eccentric methods and ideas and plans and various other things. He took me in as his child. Changed my name when I was older to, Doc to John Schwartz instead of Jonathan Powell. He knew I didn't want to be associated with that fool. He was your foster father. Yes. But he cared about me more than Powell ever wanted to, or ever could. So, I see him as my dad, not Powell. Powell's just a megalomaniac. Someone who wants power. Powell is dead. Good. It's why I want that one to go dead. That one? Yes. The one that you failed to kill? I don't have any methods of killing it. And the best I can do wouldn't work on it because it's not physical. We can't kill a non-physical Wendigo. That's not possible. That wasn't the physical one? No. It's been following us? No. We've discussed this. The one following us has always been the ethereal. It's the one that took my shape. It's the one that's taken yours multiple times. It's yeah, that's right. The ethereal. I'm sorry, what? Multiple times? Oh, come on. You didn't think I didn't meet with it multiple times. Why do you think it stayed off us many... until just now? You've been having secret meetings with a Wendigo. I've been scaring it off. I scared it off at the lake. How do I we scared know? it off at the mountain. How do we know this wasn't all just an act? Because he would already be dead. Would we? 
Yes. Or is this all part of some bigger plan? No. That you and your little Wendigo buddies have? No. In fact, I've, by curing you, I've completely destroyed their plans. That is true. He did save your life and your sanity. If I wanted to use you in any way, shape, or form, why would I cure you? Why would I save you? That doesn't make sense. If I wanted to help them, I would have just left you alone. And I didn't. Look at it that way. As I've said before, we can trust him. If you can't trust me, trust Ryan. Trust Ryan? He's just as bad as you. He's no, he is not. He's kept all these secrets from me just as you have. Only the one difference, the one little difference is, Schwartz, Rain, is that he... He didn't know the full story, but he knew. The fact that he knew, even a little bit, and kept it from me, because it wasn't important. What difference does it make? He doesn't want to hurt us. Rain doesn't want to hurt us. There was no reason to bring it up. I'm sorry, but maybe I'm missing something here, but Rain, no matter what he is, or who he is, sorry, is a Wendigo. Now that's and just all being... Wendigos are the same. Now that's just being racist. Yeah, it really is. You're one to talk. That's like saying all oh, humans. How? How am I one to talk? You're one to talk. You have a Wendigo inside of you. I have a Wendigo who doesn't want to harm the world. Who wanted to destroy the world when he was alive. But now that he is no longer alive, he has no interest in the universe. That's like saying that all humans just want to hunt for sport. It's not true. It's also like saying that all humans only want to eat hamburgers. Or all humans gr eat grass. Or all humans chop down trees to survive. That's not true. There's no such thing as good. Windigo. Really now? I never said he was good. I never said he was bad either. I just said that he was curious, wanted to learn. And why would a Windigo want to learn? Because he has no interest in survival anymore. Use your brain. Use the thing that I think you don't have in here. You don't want to talk, you got shot through it. I got shot through it, but I still kept my mind. Because after I was spliced with that Windigo, everything regenerated. Everything came Nothing back. Why do you think this lab. wound is gone? Yeah. I'm no longer stabbed. Whoa! You're nothing more than a lab experiment. Gone wrong. A monster. Or gone right. I'd say this was the best possible outcome for us. Because at least I am in control of my body. If he had been more Wendigo than human, we'd be in big trouble. We'd have a 2,000-year-old Wendigo running around who had inside intel on me, and thus on you. We would be in big trouble if this experiment had gone any other way. Do you want me to tell you the extent of what Powell wanted to do? Sure! Why not? Go for it. Rain? What do you th Hold on. What do you think he was trying to do? What do you think his experiments were trying to do? What do you think he was to trying to do? To exterminate all vermin like you. Sure. But how? How do you think he wanted to do it? He couldn't kill all of them by himself. He's not strong enough. He wasn't skilled enough. He wasn't smart enough. By creating one that could be controlled by him. Half right. He wanted to create the absolute perfect hunter. The absolute perfect way to stop a Wendigo. I am immune to the fire that burns Wendigos. I am partially immune to the silver that kills Wendigos. And yet, I am human, but I have all we test a that? Wendigo has. I wonder how fast you can move to gab- You wonder how fast? I could kill you right now and you wouldn't even be able to know. Just as I said, Ryan. Nothing more than a murder-hungry beast. No. You what did, did you do? You not a murder- this. You're gonna slice through my hand. Not a murder-hungry beast, because as I said, You'd already be dead. You just threatened my life multiple times and you do nothing. Because no. I know you can trust You don't see that. Plus, who's the one yelling? We can trust this man. Either way, I'm not finished. There's more. After Christopher adopts me, well, it's nothing. 
nothing bad. Here, you can get to him. He's not gonna kill me. I'd stop him before he could. Let's see you try. I would. <coughs> Remember, I'm physical. The other one's not. That's the only reason you were able to get close. Either way, not done with my story. After Christopher adopted me, he suggested that I get more inside information on Towel. Try to figure out what exactly his next plans were. Because at this point, Christopher never wanted to work with that foul man again. You were a spy. Sure, I was a spy. But it was my own choice. So, until I was, I don't know, much, much older, I worked on getting a doctorate. One that would make it seem like I have nothing in the short. Remember, we changed my name, and the only time Powell saw me was as a kid. When I returned back to home, I had my mark partially removed. But unfortunately, Rain's powers keep making it come back, so I had to cover it. With this new doctorate, my doctorate in wildlife biology, once I earned that, I returned home and became an assistant to Powell for paranormal activity. And that leads us to where we are today. Because you know the rest. Powell goes off to help you with your Wendigo hunting. Utter failure. Powell dies, you bury him. I don't know where. Unfortunately. Minnesota. Um, There's another bone. I see what looks to be a grave. There's trees surrounding it, and it looks to be on a pile of what could be a rock garden. It might be Powell's grave. I'm not sure. And if it is Powell's grave, we may have to go to Minnesota instead. Schwartz. Rain. No, Schwartz. My severest of apologies. You apologizing? That's a first. <laughs> Can you expand a bit? Sure. Where the hell are we going? Minnesota? A little bone quest? Is that where Powell's grave is? Yes, that's... And that's where we're heading. Where I buried him at. Wooden sword, stuck in a grave. Pile of mound. Yep. Pile of dirt. My apologies. Yes. By the river. By the river? I By the river. I didn't see river. I don't know the exact location of the, uh... Keep going. I don't know the exact location of the, uh... The grave. It's in the middle of nowhere. It did look a bit rocky. A bit barren. Do you have any idea why that would be? Ryan! I remember. <laughs> you wouldn't know, but... Okay, do you remember two years ago? We went on the expedition by that lake with the river, the... the, the area? Of course. I was afflicted. Yes. Um... What started all this? That's the exact location I was at when I, when I met up with Windigo U. That was where me and Clay found you. Was it? That's what. Yeah, that's why I believed it was you. Interesting. Just like why, and that was around the exact same area that. So it's there. We had walked away from that area for a while. For some reason, Clay, he came back. I can get us to that area. I remember where that is, like it was yesterday. Perfect. It was around have to that area. There. But Powell was buried there. Powell killed himself there. The grave should be somewhere around it. So the Wendigo didn't kill him. I guess it's innocent. You didn't, didn't know? Well, of course I didn't know. I was just blaming the Wendigo. That's what you told me, was that it got it killed. Got him killed. You'd have to lead from that location, but I can guess there. Dr. Edward Powell killed himself because of the Wendigo. The Wendigo convinced him. You, the version of you, told him that only a blood sacrifice big enough to cover a stump would 
I remember nice. when one tried that on me. Yeah, when he goes an asshole. It's already chopped off for that one. Yeah, the one who goes an asshole. I'll kill him eventually. However, there was so much blood. If Powell, so Powell was buried. Once again, I'm gonna confirm. Powell was at that location. Yes. Wooden sword. Was it? Dis do you know if it would have been myself? Do you know if it would have been disturbed in any way? Destroyed at all? No. Me and Windigo Ryan. Is, may does that thing have a name? Maybe. For well, I've been sick. I've been calling him gray, gay for a while now. What's his real name? I don't fucking know. I had no regard for what his real name is. I just called him gay. Pissed him off quite enough. Why do you think you wanted to kill me first? I've been angering it. Interesting. Hmm. So. Hmm. Nah. Windigo, Ryan, and I just set up camp there for the night. Had some pretty horrible dreams, and then we set off. Eventually, we found our way out. I don't know how, but we did. Have you heard about anything happening, not necessarily to the grave, but the area around the grave? Maybe a fire, destruction, anything. Why would I know? I try to forget about that shit. Because I, this is important. Because the reason that I, I'm asking, the grave that I saw with, right. the, with the wooden sword was destroyed. Not the grave itself. It was just there fine. The area was all rocky and barren. Maybe there was water. I don't know. It could have been a fire. Could Maybe just the... be water. He said it was by a river. Are you sure? I'm positive. That's not right. I buried clay in the woods. Well, then it might be a different grave. Either way. That's where the bone is. That's where the... Do your visions see in the future? Rain? You're talking to John. And as far as we know, no. They don't seem to be. What if that's one of us? Well, that won't be one of us. Do you want to know how? How? I'm not going to let it happen. You promise you or Rain or whatever that thing is isn't going to let any harm come to me or anyone I care for? I don't promise. Nor do I. We. I'm taking your word on that. Please do. Would rather not make an enemy of someone who I've worked pretty tightly with for so long. And I would rather not have you give me an excuse. Update from Rain. He saw me walking on the path. So they are in the future, and I do get that bone. But he doesn't know where exactly. It's a Wendigo! How the fuck do you not know where it is? Just tell him to find the bone. Remember, he was killed. We were hiding in New York by the time this happened. I had just gotten back to Missoula. I, actually, at this time and point, I was at Salmon Lake. We were investigating the, the strange flow of the lake. Wait a second. Do caves under lakes have any sort of change on their flow? I would assume they would. That's more of a geology shit subject, but... Theoretically, it can have an effect on the flow and the tide of which the water rises. If there's an underwater channel, then there must be an exit way for the water. Or an underwater, as you said, cave. It can either go under the water and go out through some sort of exit into another water channel, or... Well, I may have found their hideout. But, once again, Wendigo's move, so it probably isn't their hideout forever. We'll but that investigate that later. Yes, that is not the concern. The bone is at a grave. We end up going to this grave. There is a river, there is a wooden sword, and there is rocks everywhere. You say you put a wooden sword in Powell. Yes, I carved it myself. I tried so, to make it look as much like a tombstone as I could, or tomb marker. So, before we investigate in depths in the area that weren't Powell, like some random detectives, 
We should check his grave first, just to be certain. You think we should worry about that, or at least me? It has a bone, a Wendigo bone. No. One that I can turn into another necklace. No, you don't understand. Powell left his vehicle abandoned on the side of the road. That's not a concern. Don't worry about that. Okay. If it does come up, we can do something about it later. We'll cross that bridge when we get to it. But and for now, let's get in the air. That's your pilot. Fucking hell. That might be him. That is Ricky. How do you, how do you know? We can hardly even see the plane. The don't, sound. And don't forget rain. Why is rain. Ricky here? Sounds like his jet's up in rain. He's not gonna be able to land here, dipshit. It's a plane, not a helicopter. This is an open field. This could lead to an open field, right? We're in a housing district. If I'll, if I'll land to land at the airport. How far away is that? Not On the other side of the city. But not too far. Let's so, get to the Scion. I can get us to the airport. Air travel, eh? Looks like Rick is available. Let's, Let's get moving. Wendigo's not afraid of heights. Oh, it's not. But I'm not taking the plane. What? It moves too slow. 